The statistics are staggering. Four billion trees wiped out in just 50 years. Only a few survived. The American chestnut tree was once a familiar sight in forests and on farms in the eastern part of the United States. But the turn of the last century ushered in a dark future for the tree, wiping out almost the entire species. Well, the blight is uh, pretty devastating to, to the chestnut tree here in America. Um, it started about 1904, so it's been about 100 years ago that it was first noticed, and then slowly swept south. By 1950, it was completely through the entire range of the chestnut. It was such a part of the life of the Appalachian people in particular, um, uh, providing for uh, food and shelter and uh, even spending money. So it was, it was a large part of their life and when the blight came through it just kind of disrupted the whole way of life, especially here in Appalachia and, and all across the range really. Rescued from the brink of near total destruction, the American chestnut tree is experiencing a rebirth, thanks to the efforts of the American Chestnut Foundation. The American Chestnut Foundation is working to restore this keystone species, and in the process, we'll provide a template for other restoration programs, uh, trees and perhaps other uh, plant species. And as a result of this, uh, the public is involved heavily, and we're putting together a whole new formula of how you can put a fairly low budget together and yet have a very high output. We had a huge loss. The whole ecology of the uh, uh, eastern forest was changed with the loss of this tree. We now, after 25 years of research, have uh, come up with a tree that is resistant to the disease and looks and acts like the old American chestnut. Standing strong and tall and reaching almost endlessly into the sky, the American chestnut tree was once an essential part of American culture, providing timber for homes and farms and food for wildlife. It was called a cradle to grave tree. So you can imagine they could use the wood for anything from rocking babies to uh, burying people at the end of their life. And it provided a tremendous amount of food for the people of Appalachia in particular to feed their stock and for hunting because it attracted a lot of wildlife. With conservation and restoration efforts a top priority, the American Chestnut Foundation is actively engaged in research and running test plantings of blight-resistant trees. We're striving to uh, reforest the Appalachian region with American chestnut that has the gene for resistance in it. We noticed that, of course, the Chinese chestnuts where the, the blight originated were somewhat resistant to the fungus and so we're of course using the Chinese chestnut to incorporate resistance into the American chestnut. Well we're doing harvest right now and I'm trying to help spot trees that's ready. We're taking the burrs off the trees and uh, collecting the nuts for next year's seed. We have a good crew here everybody gets along great. Uh, we also have a lot of volunteers that come in and help. They're really important for our organization. Without them, uh, our, pro our program wouldn't be as near far along as we are right now. Bringing these mighty giants back to their original glory takes dedicated teams of community partners and volunteers. I thought that uh, it was a really worthy endeavor, and uh, I would uh, like to see the uh, chestnut uh, come back and be planted in the, in the forest. It's uh, probably one of the uh, few opportunities we have where something is, uh, has just about been wiped out and we have, uh, have an opportunity to uh, uh, possibly bring it back. In conjunction with the organization's 25th anniversary, the American Chestnut Foundation published a book titled Mighty Giants, an American Chestnut Anthology which chronicles the rich history and significance of the tree. The first chapter is written by former President Jimmy Carter, who is also an honorary director of the American Chestnut Foundation. An important part of this anthology has been the people who have participated. Uh, one of the names everybody will recognize is former President Jimmy Carter, who also is an honorary director of our foundation. And he has said that he and Roz and his wife 
believe that this is one of the most important scientific endeavors of the current time. A few years ago on Arbor Day, I had a chance to plant a, one of our American chestnut trees at the White House. And because President Bush likes to keep things small, there were just three of us, uh, Secretary of Agriculture, Mike Johans, and the President and myself. But we also had the two dogs, two Scotty dogs with us, and that made things very interesting for planting the tree and enjoying the day on the, uh, on the lawn of the White House. Through ongoing research and dedication to conservation and restoration, the American Chestnut Foundation is demonstrating that change is possible. This tree will be good for the economy. It's actually going to put cash back into the system, which is sorely needed at any time. It will bring back uh, wildlife species in greater numbers because the mass crop is very important to wildlife. And we will help heal the land, uh, particularly in the, the coal surface mine areas, uh, where there's a vast area that needs restoration. And it shows how you can harness the power of individuals and the infrastructure of partnering organizations in order to look to the future and provide hope for, in this case, particularly uh, forest health. For more information about the American Chestnut Foundation, call 1-802-447-0110 or log on to acf.org.